Guys, I just picked up one of my best model train hauls for the store. I cannot wait to show you what all is in my van right now. Let's take a look. All right, guys, I am just so thrilled to get to opening this collection. I saw this go up for sale this afternoon about an hour away from Nashville, and I literally dropped everything I was doing, grabbed my friend Nick, who you've seen in some different videos, and we drove up to Clarksville to pick up this collection, and I'm so, so excited to show you what is in here. There is some really, really, really cool stuff going on in this lot. This is one of the first boxes we're gonna take a look at. We've got five boxes to look through total. Let's start out with our very first item here. One of the classic Tyco cars, the Santa Fe piggyback flatbed. This one's great because it's got both containers and it is still in the box. So that is great to have. Always nice to have the box on these. That is in the wrong box, but we will, we will definitely sort out what item belongs in what box, I'm sure. Here's a nice one. This is an AHM box car, Main Central. I've never had this car come through. Love the bright colors on this one. Very nice. Up next is another classic Tyco car, the Trailer Train Auto Rack car. This one is great too because it's got the automobiles with it. And again, it is in the box. However, again, not in the right box. So we will definitely go through and sort these out later and make sure each one's in the correct box. But I'm assuming the box that is in here somewhere. Reaching down here, here's one that I've had a number of come through before, the AHM UP Gondola. They had a lot of these in their train sets. Pretty basic car. One complaint I have about these is that there's no... Uh, number reporting marks there's nothing on this car other than the up logo so pretty unrealistic but not a bad car definitely like this style of gondola go, excuse me definitely like this style of gondola more than the tyco ones i just think there's something a little more modern looking about it but wish it had some numbers and other details like that up next is a lifelike car santa fe cattle car a lot of these lifelike and tyco cars are going to end up being pretty cheap in the store you know I've, I've talked about these cars not being the most valuable there are some tyco cars in this lot and some other older cars that actually are worth a good bit but this one is a pretty basic one santa fe cattle car happy to have it though for sure here's our first model power piece this is a hudson's bay oil and gas tank car i've never had one of these come through before i like the colors on this one a lot and i'm very excited to have that in the store this is probably one of the most common Tyco pieces. This is the Santa Fe Caboose. As I talked about in one of my recent videos, they made a lot of Santa Fe locomotives in this brand and every engine had to have a Caboose to go with it. This one is interesting because it's in one of the older style Tyco boxes, but still fairly common car. Happy to have it though. I will never say no to a train. There's no train I've met that I don't like, except for New Bright. Digging to the bottom here is a very interesting car. This is probably gonna be a Riverossi passenger car. Yep, confirmed River Rossi right there. Pennsylvania Tuscan scheme. Love the stripes on this one, and I love these AHM River Rossi passenger cars. They really held up pretty well, in my opinion. Here's another one that's going to need some help. Santa Fe Super Chief car. Again, probably a River Rossi piece. Uh, actually, this one looks like a Concours right there. Nice car. We're going to need to find some wheels for that one, though. Maybe they're floating around in one of these boxes somewhere. There's another one to go with it. Another Concours Santa Fe passenger car. Up next, fishing through the bottom here is a Union Pacific passenger car. We're back in the River Rossi world with this one, I believe. This is a nice single dome car. Again, great detail on these. For being older cars, they really, really held up nice in my opinion. Very happy to have that one. Passenger cars are hard to find for sale, so very happy to have that. Here is part of what is a bigger set that we have in here. We actually have a lot of these cars that are these lifelike beer brand cars. That's the Michelob one. And also down here, I know we've got the Ballantine Ale. This one's complete. We've got the Miller Lite. I believe there's a few more in there, but up first we're gonna have to get some other things out. Here's a very interesting Tyco car that I've never had before. The Chew Mail Pouch, the Mail Pouch Chew Tobacco car, excuse me. One of their, I believe, uh, 50 foot box cars, but very interesting billboard design on this. I've never had one of these. I'm thrilled to have that. Tyco billboard stuff does really well in my store from my experience. And what else does really well is Louisville and Nashville stuff, which makes me very happy to have this L&N Dixie Line four bay hopper with the load included. Here's another fun one. This is one of my favorite lifelike cars. Um, I've gone on records and I don't, I don't love lifelike, but I think this is a really good car. The TTX flatbed. I think it's probably one of their best looking cars. 
I really enjoy these trailer train flatbeds. It's got one of the containers, one of them's missing, but maybe it's floating around here and we can find it later on. Here's another piece of that beer set, the Olympia beer reefer car. Here's our first engine of the lot. This is the Tyco Durango GP20. This is from one of their fictional train sets. Feels pretty stiff. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, movement in the truck there. But hopefully we'll get that fixed up. It is a good bit dusty though. I love these Tyco GP20s. I thought they looked pretty good. Unfortunately, very common with the Tyco models. It's missing uh, two of the truck covers, but not a bad parts engine by any means. Here's a fun one with a nice load, an AHM Durango and Rio Grande Western gondola. Love this custom pipe load someone's put in this. Looks like it's maybe from PVC pipe or something. Actually works pretty well. Fits in there perfect, looks pretty convincing. I said in a different video that I love custom loads and I definitely stand by that. Here's another gondola with a load, this time the most common gondola. As you know, I have seen a gazillion of these things. The UP 2923s that Tyco did, got lots of them. They don't sell very well, so we'll put that one for just a couple bucks and hopefully someone can find it and give it a new home. That's another common Tyco one right there, the Texaco single dome tank car. This one's in parts, so that's gonna end up in the parts drawer. I see another beer car here, two board reefer. Missing a couple parts, we'll get that one fixed up. And here is what I believe to be the last of these beer cars. Again, unfortunately not complete, but the PBR blue ribbon car. Really like the colors on this one. That actually, that printing's pretty crisp for a lifelike car. So very happy about that. Here is probably one of my other like favorite lifelike cars. If I was to pick ones that I like the most, this is the Erie Lackawanna box car. I think this one, you know, has a nice muted kind of not over the top paint scheme. It doesn't have that same toy look that a lot of the Tyco cars do. So that to me makes it pretty good. Another Santa Fe caboose in there. One of the very common Tyco ones. Not much to say about that guy, but something there is much to say about is this Atherin Blue Box FP45. So this is one of my favorite blue box designs. I think they nailed this one. I've had one of these come through the store before. I'm very happy to have another one. This is in the Santa Fe Blue Bonnet scheme. Looks great. Once we dust that up, it'll be perfect. And it looks like there's probably the container for that flatbed. And also down here is some of the parts for those reefers and maybe some trucks for those passenger cars. And also, it looks to be a AHM Union Pacific couple of caboose right there. Single couple of caboose rather. Very nice. So that's what's in that first box. Let's see what's in the next box. All right, here is box number two. This box has a lot of things that are in the original box, which I'm very, very excited about. Love having stuff that's in the box. And we're gonna start with this very, very bright, very vibrant Illinois Central Gulf caboose here by AHM. I love getting IC stuff because it's pretty relevant to Tennessee and people like the railroads that ran through here. So that's very nice to have. Here's another very nice AHM car. I've never had this one before. This is a Centerflow Hopper here, ACF. That looks fantastic. Gotta be one of the best looking AHM cars that I've seen. Another interesting one here is the Chef Boyardee Billboard Reefer. Billboard reefers are always a cool car to have because a lot of times people will have some kind of personal connection to the brand, whether it's just something they enjoy to eat or own, or maybe a family member worked for the company. Those are always great to have in the store. They also provide a nice um, tie between train people and non-train people because I've had folks come into the antique shop that my store is inside of and pick up a train car for a brand, even if they're not necessarily train people, which is cool to see. Here's a Penn Central reefer by Bachman. I usually get these in the silver and red Swift scheme, but it's cool to have one in Penn Central. Here's another one of our ever favorite UP gondolas. Not much to say there. And another one of those really nice Illinois Central cabooses. Very, very happy to have that. Here's one that I'm pretty sure is in the wrong box, but oh, I stand corrected. I thought that was a Bachman car, but I guess this one's an AHM version the Southern Pacific Auto Parts uh, Maxi box cars. Really like seeing that. Here's a common one, the good old fashioned BN box car. Gotta love them. I think I've got seven or eight of those right now. Here's something BN that I've never had before and that's a really nice model power covered hopper, cylindrical hopper here. That's great. I've never had this come through and it looks amazing. Very happy about that. Someone commented, to talk about model power. And I really think model power is a, a better brand than 
than some of the other ones that I've kind of discussed in some of my videos. I think this stuff like this holds up a lot better than the lifelike and Tyco rolling stock. This is a Southern Pacific version of the car we just saw, and I think it looks fantastic. Another grain car here, another center flow. This is in the plastics shell scheme. Very, very nice car. Love getting covered hoppers in. Here's a car that I get pretty often, but never have in the box, and that's the Tyco flatbed. Great Northern version with the coils on it. Happy to have it in the box. Those usually are missing that load, so very nice to have that. Here's a Union Pacific cattle car by AHM. Here's another flatbed. I believe this is another one of those TTX ones that we saw earlier. Uh, no, I stand corrected. This is an Illinois Central flatbed. I've never seen that before. Uh, that's a really, really nice one. I wonder what brand that is. If that's Tyco, I've never seen it. That's pretty cool. Like I said earlier though, very nice to have some Illinois, Illinois Central stuff come in the store. Here's another one of those model power cylindrical hoppers. And I mean, I gotta say, I don't think I've seen a lifelike car that looks as good as this car. I think this is great. So for people that are saying model power isn't that great, I mean, obviously this is still has plastic wheels and horn hooks, so it's not the best, but that looks a lot better than some of those lifelike cars in my opinion. Here's a very unique one, Providence and Worcester. Never had this car come before. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen this car before, but really, really nice. I'm loving some of these kind of rare AHM cars that we're seeing here. Here's one of the classic Tyco El Capitan box cars. I've got plenty of those, but they're pretty nice. Here is a Bachman Great Northern flatbed here. These were always kind of cool because they have four trucks on them. I do find, however, that they aren't exactly the heaviest car in the world. So sometimes that lack of weight combined with the uh, harder time they're gonna have turning around corners with all those trucks doesn't always work out the best. They do derail a little bit, but still a neat car nonetheless. Here's another one of those Tyco flatbeds that comes with a load. This one of course has the truck cabs on it. Usually these are missing, usually it does not have the box and usually it's missing the insert. So really cool that that's all together. Here's a very, very unique car. This is a box car that has had the doors cut out and has some military equipment in there. I've never seen this before. What a unique car that is, never seen that. There's another AHM car for us, the classic DuPont tanker. Love these AHM 50 foot tank cars, they look great. And here is a Tyco car that I've never ever seen before, the Tyco Jack Frost 50 foot billboard reefer. I have never seen this car before and it looks fantastic. I'm curious what these are going for because I know some of the rare Tyco stuff can be worth a good bit. And I believe that's everything in that box. Let's switch over to box number three, shall we? All right, here is our next box that we're gonna go through, more items that are in their original boxes. And we will start out here with an AHM Southern Pacific gondola. Here is a one of the common Tyco Texaco single dome tank cars, second one of these that we've had in the collection. Another common Tyco car, the New Haven 50 footer. This is probably one of the most common Bachman cars, the Southern Gondola. Here's one of my favorite Tyco cars, the Chrome Shell Tanker. Always loved that chrome finish on these. I think it looks incredible. Another fairly tight, common Tyco car, but also a fun one. This is the Southern Railroad uh, Log Pulp car. Box is looking a little bit shady though, unfortunately. Here's the Tyco Perina Reefer. There's another fun Tyco car. This is the Great Northern Flatbed with the tractor loads on it. Always enjoyed this one. Cool to see it in the box as well. Usually the box is missing with that. Here is a Model Power Rock Island, the Rock box car. Looks really, really cool. Here's another common Bachman car, the Santa Fe offset couple of caboose. Now here is one that I've never seen and I highly doubt this is actually a lifelike car because it looks way too good to be one, but that is a some sort of reefer there, MDT. It looks like a New York Central uh, kind of line or something. Maybe that was their version of like the Pacific Fruit Express or something like that. If you know about that, please leave a comment. Here's a C&O box car, nice silver paint job on that one. 
Here's probably one of the most unique items in here. This is one of the Bachman Loco and Caboose combo sets. This is one of those really, really weird noseless units that GE did. And I believe that Chessie and Family Lines were the only two railroads that bought them. This is of course the Family Lines version with that seaboard caboose to go along with it. Really, really like the look on this one. And there's a second Loco and Caboose combo to go with it, the Chessie GP30. Again, probably one of my favorites of the older Bachman engines, just in terms of looks. Really like that Chessie pair. Happy to have those. I've never really had any of those Caboose Loco combo sets before. And here's one that I've never had in the box, the Santa Fe Big RS11, I think is what these are. The big old Tyco diesel. Looks amazing in the box. I've never had this box come through, so I'm very, very happy about that. And the last thing in this box would be a pretty common Bachman car, the Pensalt Three Dome Tanker. Here is our next box. On top, the first thing you'll see is a lot of these switch packs from those old AHM and old Model Power and Lifelike and all that stuff brands. They all had these like individual switches you could buy. I get a lot of these packages through. It's very curious. It's one of like the, the packages that survives a lot. I don't really know exactly why. Maybe it's because people only pull out the switch and then leave the extra curve track and wiring and stuff. Not entirely sure, but we've got a lot of these. Maybe the switches that actually go with those are somewhere in the collection. Here is probably one of the dumbest things ever made in this hobby. It's this, this completely ridiculous bridge and trestle set that Bachman and Tyco and Life like all had. It's awful. This is probably one of the, in terms of like a consumer usage thing, probably one of the hardest things to put together that any of these brands did. The way you slip the tracks into the bridge is just kind of dumb. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really look very convincing either, but it is sealed, which is pretty interesting to have something like that new in box. Here's some more track action here. First of all, I've never seen this box for a Bachman switch before. Second of all, there's some new in box model power track. I did talk about in a recent video that really that kind of track, even new in box, isn't worth a whole lot, unfortunately, but it is cool to have. I like having that vintage feel for my train store, having some older new in box stuff. Here's the common Bachman power pack. People do still buy power packs like that, you know, whether it's to power accessories or whatever, those do still sell. Here is a piece that I'm assuming is not actually in here because of the weight. Yeah, it's not in there. I do actually have one of these that doesn't have the box, so I can definitely complete that. This is an AHM accessory here, kind of like a MyJack crane loader type of thing. Pretty cool to have the box for that though. Here is a couple more lifelike cars. These are two of the, the ones that again, I feel like are kind of better looking lifelike cars. They don't look totally ridiculous. They do have some pretty nice colors to them and I always will love the chassis stuff. Here are two of the most common HO engines. This is the Tyco old school little switcher that they did. Yeah, this is pretty much probably one of their most common engines, especially in that Santa Fe paint scheme. Those you do usually run well though, just out of the box. And here's another ultra common one. This is the Bachman uh, Santa Fe F7. Like I said in my Worthless Trains Part 2 video, the Santa Fe F7 is the most oversaturated engine in probably model railroading in general, but definitely in HO scale. I get these all the time, but very cool to have nonetheless. Here is another F7. This is a much, much, much nicer one. This is an Atherin Blue Box, which I have praised Atherin Blue Box quite a bit in the past, and I always will. Nice Baltimore and Ohio locomotive there. I'm sure that'll run. Looks very, very nice too. Here is a very, very cool one. And this is actually, the gentleman told me this was his original train set in the 80s. What we're looking at here is a Fleischmann German train set. And it is awesome. Look at that. That is super, super cool. All in the box, even a German power pack in there. Very, very nice. Yeah, this was the original owner's first train set that got him into all this stuff. Everything you're seeing here was a product of him getting that, I would assume. Here's another Fleischmann German car. I really have never carried much German stuff, so it seems like a decent time to start. Inside of here, we have a German, I guess you'd call that a wagon, uh, you know, their, their version of a, of a box car over here. Pretty cool to have though. Really have not carried much Fleischmann stuff, so glad to be starting out. Here's a US Army flatbed by AHM. Here's another power pack in the box, this one being a Tyco. Like I said earlier, even though those are kind of dated at this point, they do still sell every now and then just because they're nice to power accessories and stuff with. Here's a new in box switch selector. 
couple paper items here, the blueprints from At Atlas for their SnapTrack stuff, and the six HO Railroads You Can Build book by Atlas. That might be a nice read. Unfortunately, paper stuff, kind of like those Transformers I mentioned, are becoming very dated. You know, you can find all that stuff on the internet now, um, which I guess is just, you know, sign of the times, I suppose. Here's the operating Bachman uh, UP cattle car they did that'll shoot out boxes or crates or whatever it's got in there. Maybe cows in that case. Here's two very common cars, the Morrison Cudson Hopper from Bachman and the Tyco Santa Fe Caboose. Both those are pretty common. Those will be very, very cheap in the store. Here's a New York Central flatbed. I believe that's gonna be a lifelike, and I believe that it was supposed to have circus train containers on it. Again, very common car here, the lifelike Santa Fe center couple of caboose. I get plenty of those in. Here is an American Fleischmann piece, which is very interesting. This is a nice Burlington route F7 here. Very nice looking engine. Interestingly enough, it's got the German couplers on it. So I guess it was made to interact with their German trains. Here's another ultra common engine, really not one that I go out of my way to get ever, but we'll still take it. This is the lifelike GP38. This was their most common train set engine, at least from this time. And that Santa Fe paint scheme is on just about all of them. So again, not really a super exciting engine by any means. Here's another circus train piece. This is the lifelike shows set that they had. This is the flatbed from that set. Here's another German car. I'm loving the packages on these on these German freight cars here. I guess German wagons, as we gotta be calling them, if we're gonna be uh, regionally correct. Let's see what we got in here. A couple parts floating around. What are we looking at? Looks like some kind of tank car. Yeah, SO tank car. Very, very cool. It's cool to get SO stuff, because I know Lego did a lot with them back kind of in this era too. And again, that package is just very, very classic looking, very cool. Yet another Fleischmann piece, passenger car right there. Here's some track that goes with one of those switches we saw earlier. Here is another one of those Illinois Central Gulf flatbeds with the containers on it. And here is something really, really cool. This is a big old Sealand MyJack crane. Now it's kind of in pieces, but someone can probably put this back together. Very, very cool piece, and it's huge, guys. I mean, that's probably a foot and a half long. That's amazing. Here is a billboard box car, the powerhouse version. This is by Bachman. They made a bunch of these back in the day. I know they had like train sets that they custom designed for that brand. A couple more common freight cars here. The Swift Reefer from Tyco, Erie box car from Bachman. And one more Fleischmann piece in this box, one of those passenger coaches. That looks fantastic. I'm thrilled about those. And in the bottom here, we have this totally awesome box of locomotives. This is a complete, complete mystery box. And it's really, really cool to see what's in here. There's an AHM CNW GP18. Pretty cool engine. Love the CNW scheme. Here's one that I'm super excited about. As you know, LNN stuff does great, and this is a nice LNN RS3. Non-powered, but still amazing. Great to have an LNN item. Here is a very common, like I said earlier, Bachman Santa Fe F7 in the box. Here's another common Santa Fe item, the 5628 GP10, I believe, from Tyco. Funny thing about these is that's the Conrail font for the numbers, but they, they've kept it on all their other engines for that model at least. Here's one I remember having when I was a kid, the Mantua Tyco Union Pacific F7. It's very cool that it is still in the box too. Here's probably the most unique Santa Fe thing in this box. This is a GP40 in the blue bonnet scheme. A little bit of decal freak show going on there, but definitely also not an extended vision caboose. I don't think that's in the right box. All right, and here is our next box. Now, a lot of the stuff in this box, pretty much all of it, was actually in a giant trash bag, and the owner was actually just gonna throw it all away, but I was very, very happy to be able to save some of the stuff from scrap, if you will. There's even more stuff in the trash bag we'll look at in a minute, but we'll start out here with this really unique AHM item. I've never seen this before. This is a crossing, but it's not really like any other HO crossing I've seen. First of all, I really like the packaging on this with this, uh, you know, roadway design here, but also just look at that 
beauty right there. It's almost a European design, which is pretty interesting, but really, really cool item. Love that it's got the box too. Here is another operating crossing gate. This is the more typical kind that I, I see all the time. Tyco and life like everybody have one of these where the train just kind of rolls across this, this uh, leveled plate here and it'll knock down the gate. Honestly, that design to me didn't really ever work that well. I guess it's just, you know, for toy train sets, it's not a huge deal. But personally, I never saw it work that well. Here is some track new in the box. Unfortunately, this this kind of track, you know, really I've, I've spoken about it a good bit. It's not really worth much anymore. Um, you know, having it in the package does help a little bit, but it's still not ideal. Uh, this bin here has a lot of different just like building parts in it. There's a lot of plastic little stuff in here. You know, sort of the standard train set affair. This actually was a really cool item I saw. This is an old school, either a Corgi or a Matchbox uh, BP truck. Really, really like that. But yeah, mostly just a lot of like sort of, you know, telephone poles and things you'll find in train sets in there. This box is mostly all just old track, which unfortunately, actually we'll talk about the track in a second. First of all, there's a really cool little station here. I think this might have been part of like a Ertl Thomas set or uh, no, actually it looks like this is made by a company called Soma. I don't really know what this went to. Clearly some kind of a train toy would sit up there, but I really have never seen this before. Pretty interesting though. Doesn't look bad actually. Uh, a little bit more track there. Here is some old school uh, papers from what looks like a hobby store. Here, look at this, Hobby USA. I guarantee none of those are still open, which is really, really sad. There's the manual for that switch tower. And here's all a bunch of track. You know, I, I've talked about this before. Unfortunately, this stuff, I mean, I've pretty much given it away at this point. I have so much of it and no one really goes after it anymore. It's just kind of been outdated. But if you come by the store and need some, uh, hit me up because we I can send you home with a ton. Okay, so I went through the rest of that big trash bag full of stuff uh, Which you can actually see Sitting right there and most of it was actually just you know more kind of just junk track and stuff There were a couple things in it. I, I thought I'd pull out just because I thought they were interesting. First of all, I've never seen these Tyco uh, Truck packs before I mean, it's pretty cool. I like having you know old new old stock stuff this is also an interesting freight platform. Don't think I've seen that one before either. That's not really the, the super common one. Nice little Sealand container and a couple pieces to the Plasticville train station right there. Nothing too crazy, but you know, thought it'd be worth pulling out of the bag. All right, here are the last couple items here. If you've made it this far, thank you so, so much for sticking with me. I've really enjoyed unboxing all this stuff. Quickly, we'll run through these. A uh, little DuPont tanker, I believe that's a AHM one. Uh, here's another AHM car, the Peabody Hopper. Last couple engines we got for the lot. This is one of those old school Bachman uh, Burlington little switcher, shunter deals, whatever you want to call it. And here is another pretty common one, the IHC uh, UP GP7 High Hood. Those usually run pretty good though. Last couple things here, a couple, you know, common life flight cars, nothing too crazy. They do have the box though, which is always nice. And there you have it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this unboxing. This was an absolute pleasure to unbox, get to share this experience with you guys. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more stuff coming very, very soon. I lied, I forgot one more thing. I actually had this sitting in my car still, but this is one of the more rare Tyco engines, the SD24 in the Rio Grande paint scheme. So yeah, there's one more thing that came with this collection. And here is one more look at this just unbelievable haul, guys. I'm so, so thankful to be having all these items hitting my shelves soon. Just an unbelievable amount of awesome stuff here. I'm thrilled about this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.